Hello everyone. It's James again. And before I start today's video. I just want to quickly say. All work in this video contains 100% original content of and by myself James Smith, otherwise known as Bigood4000, and was uniquely created with normal software, by myself James Smith. As I purchased commercial rights from Normal to produce my unique and original video with this software. Commentary is uniquely my own thoughts, feelings, and expressions. Now that I have that out of the way. I do hope your day is going better than fantastic. Today. I want to talk more about the topic from yesterday's video. Where basically we as narcissistic abuse survivors. We were born and trained by our narcissistic families to run around constantly seeking the approval of others. Which oftentimes becomes our undoing when it comes to relationships with others. And is one of the biggest reasons why we become the target of the narcissist. And it's something a narcissist can scan out in the world and zoom in on a target that has this trait. And they do their various narcissistic tests to see how much our boundaries are lacking. And how much they can get away with. And if they are able to take us on their long con so to speak. And going back to yesterday's video on this subject. There were many many great comments. And I thank you all for sharing. And I will be reading more and more. Getting ideas on how to speak about them in upcoming videos. But I wanted to talk about and touch on two comments. One mentioned just simply. That they feel lost. And that really sums it up. You see at least for me. I kind of realized early on that I was just a bargaining chip to my narcissistic mother. My mother wasn't doing the things a mother would do to show they love their family and their sons or daughters. Things didn't add up for me. My golden child brother and I were constantly put in one humiliating situation after the next. With no help. And not looking into making things better. I remember when my father was living and my mother was going to court against him. My mother charging up her cards. To buy us all kinds of toys she couldn't afford. We were lavished with attention. But the moment she got what she wanted. Which was full control and custody of my brother and I. The positive attention stopped. And the chaos went into high gear. And what's interesting. I didn't really know that my mom was charging up her cards for this purpose back then. I didn't even know what credit cards were to be honest with you. But many years later. It all kind of made sense. And I also believe some of the nice toys came from my father. But my mother likely repackaged them as coming from her. Just a guess. But I think a good guess. With that said. Though I didn't know what a credit card was. I knew I was being treated differently once she had what she wanted. As I mentioned before in past videos. I was put into slow learning classes. Much like happened to my mother when she was younger by her narcissist mother. And granted my mother didn't have the best education. But there never seemed to be a sense of urgency to figure out better options for her sons. And actually it even seemed purposeful what was happening. Much like a parent with an eating problem trains their son or daughter to have that same eating problem. So they will grow up with this problem and they won't leave home. And will stay a part of the toxic family dynamic. And that's what was happening with my brother and I. My mother would quickly shuffle my brother out in front when she wanted to get something from someone. Or she wanted to use our hard luck story to gain sympathy of some kind. But the moment she got what she wanted we were put on the shelf until we were needed again. And I just thought to myself. How can a mother love their son? When they see their son crying and begging for help. Literally crying and begging for help. Even at that age. I thought to myself. If I had a son or daughter and witnessed such misery and pain in them. It would rip me apart and I would have to do something. Even if it was to talk to them and honestly try to understand where their problems were coming from. That never happened with my mother. Again. We would be taken off of the shelf to be used. And then put back on the shelf when she was done. And then when we were no longer very young and cute and could gain her sympathy. Instead of yes. 
the ongoing chaos and crazy screaming matches at times happened. With at times her putting up a different image to the outside. With using us to get what she wanted. It turned into nothing but utter chaos in the home. But now even more so than ever. Playing up her victim status. And stating my brother and I especially me. Since I was the scapegoat. Was making her life horribly hard. The simple fact. As young as I can remember. I felt used. I actually felt it. And it didn't feel very good coming from the person that is supposed to love you and take care of you. And there was born the feeling and needing to prove I think. Maybe if I talk to her at the right time. She will see my pain. Today will be the day she will finally understand what is happening and we will be a family. Now will be the time she will understand how much as her son I love her very much and maybe she will start to love me back. And this is the pattern they want us on. Working working working. Working and digging for fool's gold. For love we will never see nor will we ever get from them. And we would do anything. Fall and the floor and cry our eyes out. We were young and hurt. There wasn't anyone to grab us and say. You are loved. But not by this person. Don't give them the satisfaction of your pain. And we never develop boundaries. Because at an early age. We started with doing really really wacky things to prove how much we cared about our families. And we also believed a lot of wacky things our family told us on how things would get better when they never ever did. And throughout these years, I felt lost. And even when I got older, and Susie my ex dropped her mask, I felt alone all over again. I felt lost. Utterly lost. I didn't know what to do. And again, I think this is where we just fall into default mode. Approve, prove, prove. We do that because we are lost and our brain scans for what to do in such a situation. And it can't find any other answers. But prove prove prove. Because that was what we were born to do. And no one ever told us any different. No one grabbed us and said. That's not what you do. Don't do that to yourself. And that brings me to another comment. Which basically states. To learn to not have the approval of others especially narcissists and other manipulators. And that takes time. It does. Because just like the narcissist's brain is wired to gain supply from manipulating us into this bad situation and that bad situation. And gaining narcissistic supply as a result. Our brains are wired with this high-like feeling when we think. This time will be the time they will love me. I remember getting so excited. When I felt like my mother was turning the right corner and seeing my pain. But then to quickly have this feeling go away and into a depression because of seeing I was conned. But because that feeling felt so good. Thinking my mother was going to change. I would whip myself all up and into working hard at trying to prove prove prove. And that feeling sticks with you. Or what you are chasing. So just like the narcissist is chasing supply from our pain. We are chasing the love and approval from the narcissist. With this same type of brain high in both pursuits. But that's what needs to be looked at and understood. What feeling comes over you when you feel like you need to prove yourself? When you're in prove mode do you have a sense of energy to do so? Where did this energy to do so come from? Trace it back. For me. I felt like I was no more than a bargaining chip and supply to my mother. I was a check. I remember realizing really early. And telling my mother. Wait a minute. If I wasn't born. And money wasn't coming in because I'm here. You wouldn't have a place to live. You wouldn't be able to pay your own rent. Very honest words for someone very young. But I knew. And in that she knew I knew. Thus I was slated the scapegoat. But I told her that. Because I also let her know how it hurt me. And how I felt like I was being used for just a means for her to support herself. In a way. I was oddly hoping my mother would prove. Prove otherwise. Well. 
my mother didn't feel the need to do so. And there again is the birth of some of our behaviors. Have you ever felt like your relationships are one-sided? Now though you shouldn't run around trying to prove yourself and them proving themselves. But doing the right things in life should be what you are striving for. Without putting a toxic person in front of you in the way of needs. What I mean is. In these interactions with my mother. It was strictly a one-sided relationship. I was doing all of the loving. And running around trying to prove myself to her. When I was so young and knew nothing about life. And here my mother was doing the exact opposite. Putting me in one bad situation after the next and not caring how it affected me at that moment or long term. And because that's all I knew. And I had no boundaries. It was this type of treatment I would accept from this so-called friend. And that so-called friend. And from people like my ex Susie. One-sided one-sided one-sided. I knew nothing else it seemed. Because my brain was wired so young to think and react this way. And this is why I now understand the success rate to get narcissists to change is next to impossible. Because the training and mental mashing up is so deep and precise. And even for those that are empaths. There are often times toxic traits we may have possessed for many years. And may have taken many years to work through. There is a video of a guy talking about his narcissistic mother. It's from some time ago. And he mentioned how he thought it was everyone's problem. For the reason why he didn't have good friends. And then years later. He realized. It was his weird behavior trained into him by his narcissistic mother. Though he was an empath. He sadly drove off this people that didn't understand what was going on. Which is another topic for another video. But this wiring in our minds on prove prove prove. It's really like deep deep mind control. We hear certain buzzwords. Or see certain actions. And without even thinking. We jump into action. Prove prove prove. But the main way to work on this. I won't say fix. But work on this issue. Is to trace it back to the beginning. And for me it was. How did I feel? Well. I felt like a bargaining chip. I felt like a check. I felt like narcissistic supply. I felt like my purpose in life for my mother was to be used. It's that simple. And then I looked at what. What did that feeling of being used do inside of me? What actions took place? Well. Of course. I ran around trying to get my mother's love. And to get her to change. And bingo there it is. The training I was purposely put through to teach me and wire me to be this way. Because you know. The mind is interesting. And people can be conned and wired to think a variety of things. And not even know why they think. Do or say the many things they do. But the goal for me was and is to. Is to not only develop and keep boundaries. But to attempt to feel different than a bargaining chip and narcissistic supply. With that said. Some days are easier than others. And some days are harder. Because if you were treated this way by most of the people in your life. It's really deeply ingrained in your brain wiring. So that's why I say. Work. Not fix. Work on this issue. The best you can. And know from me to you. Though you were likely used like myself as a bargaining chip. For money. For narcissistic supply. So forth and so on. Though you were indeed used for these things. And maybe you still are being used for such things. You are more than that. You're a person. You're a person. That was born into possibly a terrible home. With toxic people. That's not your fault. And maybe you found yourself being conned by a toxic spouse. Based on not having boundaries in your life because of how you grew up. But you are a person. A person that should be loved and not treated like a thing for money or whatever. And the same goes for me as well. It could have been different. I could have been born into a nice loving home. But I wasn't. That is the card I was handed. 
I now understand that hand much better. And I just have to work with it the best I can. And I just have to remind myself. Just because the family hand I was given wasn't very good. And way less than perfect. Doesn't mean I'm just meant to be used by this person and that person. No no no. Which bring me to something I want to talk about some more as time goes on. This high value. Low value and level up talk is just growing and growing. And it's basically saying. If you are hard working. But for some reason. You aren't rich. You aren't worth to have a relationship with. Which is again. Training people to see their self worth in how much they can be used by someone else. Look. No one isn't saying there shouldn't be boundaries there. You should want to be with a hard worker. And someone that cares about themselves on how to make their way in the world. But not everyone is a millionaire. And not everyone will ever be a millionaire. No matter what they do and no matter how hard they work. These are just facts. And sadly we are training a generation to see dealing with anyone and everyone in life as transactional. And if you aren't able to have this certain life standing. Then you don't get to have friends. Or you don't get to have a life partner. Which in my humble cartoon opinion is mass wiring society with the same type of prove 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 mentality. That my narcissist mother worked so hard to wire me with. And your narcissist parent. Or parents work so hard to wire you with. You're a bargaining chip. That's it? Nope. Nope. No you're not. And I've said it before. And will say it again. The moment that family court is looked at really closely. And it can be seen as the massive money machine that it is for those that run it. And how it ruins so many lives. Lives of the parents and lives of their sons and daughters. If we can see it and call for a change. This might be the first push to change this wiring of society of seeing each other as money signs and opportunities to be had. Because the more this goes on. The worse it's going to get. There's a term out there for guys that run around buying this and doing that for potential mates. And for the spouses once they start to date them and or marry them. And what that term breaks down to is the narcissistic wiring we were trained with to prove prove prove. And to be in a one-sided relationship. Hey. I have news for you. This is narcissistic training. And as I've asked before. What would happen if a narcissist or narcissists weaseled their way into positions of social influencers? No matter it be those that make movies and television shows. Or those that made up the rules on how you have to go about having a family. Such as with family law. Well if that were the case. They would likely set things up to be in favor for them to get never-ending money. And narcissistic supply. All the while keeping you on a hamster wheel. Chasing something you will never get. And that's your need to prove to the narcissist that you care about them to be acknowledged. And them admitting that they are treating you wrong. And then somehow treating you right. With that said. I believe those that are motivated to share the truth about these things. Might get somewhere not because they will get the narcissist to do the right thing because the narcissist cares. But because the narcissist might not have a choice. If more people wake up and bring awareness to this problem. People I believe can take their lives. Families and ways of life back. But we have to see narcissists for what they are. And see the situation for what it is before we can move forward for ourselves first. To correct ourselves. To fix ourselves. And the more people are moving forward in a healthy way. The less targets narcissists will have. And they will start to lose control. And you can then take things back like the family dynamic. But that's just my two cents worth. With that being said. Thank you for listening to this little cartoon guy today. I do appreciate it and I do appreciate you. Please leave your comments below. And I do hope your day is blessed. And until next time. Bye for now. And be good to yourself.